Hello guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we will see the following topic. The slope of the second line to a graph of a function. I know it looks like a very long title, but the idea behind this is very simple. And you already know what slope is, and I believe you already know what a second line is, linea secante. And of course you know the idea behind the graph of a function. So let's talk about this concept. I have in here six Cartesian planes, and in here I'm going to draw some functions. First one, let's draw this function that looks like x squared, more or less, you know, I don't care about being a little fuzzy about, about this. And then let's suppose we have something like a cubic function, okay, like so. And what about something like, that looks like an exponential function? more or less like so. And I'm going to draw them in here again. The same things, same functions, more or less. Okay, so we have six functions, or three that are repeated twice, the same. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is, for each of the three upper ones, I'm going to draw second lines for each of these functions, second lines to the graphs of these three functions. Okay, so let me start. This is a second line to the graph of this function. This is a second line to the graph of this function. And This is a second line to the graph of this exponential function. Now, let's contrast that or let's compare these second lines with other lines that are not second. For example, for this function x squared, I can draw this, this line, a vertical line, and this is not second. For this one, I can draw this. And this is not a second line to the graph of this function. And for the exponential function, I can draw this. Well, let me try this way. And this is not a second to this function. So what do you observe? How can if if I'm telling you that all of these three are second lines, and all of the, these three are not second lines, what could be the defining property just by looking at the at the at the graphs? What could be the defining property of a second line? What do you think? What is the, the, the feature that all of these three share and that these do not? If you notice, in all cases, when we have a second line, such line cuts the graph in at least two points. At least two points. You see, one point, two points. One, two, three, so at least two points. In this case, we have actually three. And indeed, we have point and point. And for all of these three, which I'm telling you are not second lines, for example, with this one, this, this line only cuts the graph in one point. This line, the same, all, uh, only cuts the graph of, the, of this function at this point. And this one doesn't even cut it at all. You see what I mean? So what is the definition of a second line? Okay, a second line to the graph of a function or a second line to a curve, that's also one usual way to say it, is a line that cuts such graph or such curve in at least two points, at least two points. It can be three, it can be four, it can be five, it can be six, it can be a million, it doesn't matter. If your line at least cuts the graph in two points, you're talking about a second line. Una linea second. So that's basically the definition. I think it's a pretty standard and easy definition to work with. And we're interested in getting the slope of second lines 
two graphs of functions, okay? So let's go right there. Now that we have the concept in our minds, let's work with some examples. I'm gonna go directly to the exercise section. I'm sorry, it's not this. So this is the homework guys, or the exercises that we have to complete for this particular lesson. We are still in topic 5.1, the concept of limit and the derivative. And all we are doing, all, all we have uh, studied about limits and this thing in particular about the slope of a second line, uh, our context or background in order to reach this particular concept, the derivative. This is our, our goal, to understand this mathematical concept. But we cannot do it without having the concept of limit and without having the concept of the slope of a second line. So in here we have uh, the instructions. We have section one, section two, and section three. I'm gonna solve two exercises from section one and two exercises from section two, and you can follow the rest on your own. So let's see. Okay, let's see. The section number one says, given the following functions, find the slope of the second line that goes through, I'm sorry for the, for the typo, through the two given points. So I'm gonna do first, let's let's do the first one, okay? I'm giving you the function f, f of x equals x squared, a very typical function, and very simple to work with. We have this function, and as you know, it is represented by a parabola. Okay. And we are giving two points, point one, one comma one, and point two, three comma nine. First of all, you should ask yourself, are these points, are these two points part of my function? Do they belong in such function? Yeah, right, because basically this function, what this function is doing is squaring the independent variable, right? So if the independent variable x is one, one squared is one. If the in independent variable is three, then three to the square is nine. So these points are in fact in the graph of this function. That is the first thing you, you gotta make sure, okay? Okay, so what is the instruction again? Finding the slope of the second line that goes through these two points. So let's draw such second line, more or less, that's it. And basically the whole thing is very easy. Why? Because we know by now, we should know how to get the slope of a line that goes through two points, right? It's very easy. Okay, how do we do it? Remember, with our formula for the slope. If we know that this line in particular goes through these two points, point one and point two, all I need to do is use the formula for the slope. Remember it's represented by M and the slope is the following. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It's that simple guys. Nothing else, no, nothing beyond this. So what is Y2? It is this number, right? It is the y coordinate of the point two. Y one is the y coordinate of the point one. So we have nine minus one over x two, which is three, minus x one, which is one. And that's it. We have eight over three and we're done. It is that simple. Let's go to another one. What about number three? 
you may be you may get confused in number three so i'm gonna do it so three again we have a quadratic function minus x squared minus one this is my function and this function will look a little like so okay it's a parabola that opens uh, downwards and a little below the x-axis so this is f of x this is x okay and if you notice look at the points that they're giving you it, it, they look weird okay the point one is zero comma f of zero so this may confuse you i'm going to explain what it means in a moment the point two is equal to five comma f of five so you may be thinking, what do they mean by this, right? I mean, why why don't they give why don't they well why don't you teacher give me a, a point like this? You know, a normal, well-behaved point. Okay, uh, I know why because I'm trying to get somewhere with this type of problems. But basically, the idea is that you should understand that there is nothing weird about this. What is f of zero? F of zero represents the number. This notation, f of 0, represents the number that the function gets when you evaluate it in x equals 0. That's all it is, right? So basically, all you need to do is evaluate the function in 0. f of 0 is equal to minus 0 to the square minus 1. And basically, you will get minus 1, right? So in other words, this point is 0, comma minus one that's all it means you see i'm translating this into this and this point will be five comma f of five same idea we evaluate the function in five and we get minus five to the square <coughs> minus one this is minus 25 minus one this is minus 26 so this point will be five comma minus 26 you see how it works it's a very it's a very simple thing now that you have the two points 0 comma minus 1 and 5 comma minus 26 you do the same thing as we did in the first exercise so I, I, I don't think I need to go on let's do another one of these another possible source of confusion the number 6 so let's read it f of x equals x squared so one more time my parabola in its most simple form and we have two points point one says that such point is a comma f of a and point two is equal to b comma f of b so the same thing you may be you may be going like this looks weird and I understand, I understand what, what you're thinking, okay? These are not just uh, simple points like 2,4 or 3,3, 3, I don't know, whatever like that. But uh, even though they look weird, it's nothing different, really. I mean, it, it's basically the same. A stands for a number, and F of A stands for another number, which is the number that you you get out of the function when you when you evaluate it in A. So let's do it. This point, this point, point one, which is a comma f of a, is nothing but the following. The first thing is you're going to evaluate f of a. If f of x is equal to x squared, then f of a is equal to a squared. You see how simple it is? So basically, f of a equals a squared. So point one is a comma a squared and if we do the same with point two we're gonna get that the point two is b comma f of b and by doing the same thing we did before we're gonna get b comma b squared okay so now i have my point one and my point two in a more simplified form instead of f of a now it looks like this and instead of f of b now it looks like so perfect now, again, how do I calculate the slope? I'm trying to get the slope of my second line, the second line that goes through this point 
and through this point. I just follow the formula blindly, okay? If my formula tells me that the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, well, I just need to know what y2 is, what y1 is, x2 and x1, and I just substitute in, in here, and I'm done. I'm perfectly correct. So what is y2? y2 is the y-coordinate of the second point which is this, b squared. And that's all you have to put in there, okay? I'm gonna do it in blue. The slope will be b squared, which is y2, minus y1, which is the y-coordinate of my first point, which is this number, over x2 minus x1. x2 is this number, which is b, minus x1 which is this number which is a and at the end if you want drop the parentheses once once you're done with the substitution and you're done the slope is b squared minus a squared over b minus a do not get confused by getting answers like this guys answers, answers in mathematics do not do not have to be something numerical uh in in a constant form like three or 0 0.2 or whatever. This is the answer. There's nothing wrong about this. Nothing wrong or nothing weird about this answer. Okay, so I'm gonna see if you can solve seven on your own. This also may get you a little confused, but I'm gonna leave it for you. Okay, second section. They tell you, next are given a series of functions, each one paired with a line. So if you observe, I'm giving you a function. I'm gonna I'm gonna underline the function, and then I'm giving you the equation for a line. Can you see function line function line? Okay. So what what about that? Uh, we we were here. Uh, the question is this. Is the line, is the line that I'm, I'm pairing up with the function, is such line a second to the graph of the function? That is the first question. Uh, first, approach the problem graphically. For those with a star, you must also approach the problem analytically. Okay, I'm going to do this one, first of all. So what do I mean by approaching the problem analytically? You have to go to the to some software or with, to your TI. I have it here. Okay, and you're gonna grab the function. So we have f of x equals x squared, which is the function that we have. Okay, you see, it's this function, and then also graph your line. So I enter, and then I write y equals x, and you can see that we have the line in blue, okay? And what is the question? The question is, is this line a second line to the graph of this function? And as we can see, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that clearly this blue line is cutting my function, or the graph of the function, properly speaking, at two points. Therefore, it classifies as a second line. Okay, that is that is uh, the answer. It's very simple. Now, what does? Uh, by the way, I haven't written the stars. I'm sorry because I, I'm telling you, for those with a star, you must also approach the problem analytically. We have already solved the problem graphically. Just by doing this, I'm I'm done. I'm saying that this line is a second, and basically I'm done. But this is a graphical approach. Now, how do I do the same analytically? Let's suppose that you don't have any software, you don't have your calculator at hand. How do you do that with your hand, pencil, and paper? Okay, what you have to do is this. This is your function. This is your line. And if you remember, a way to find if there are intersections between two uh, fu functions, okay, between this function and this function, remember that this is also a function. It can be written in this way. Okay, this is one of them. 
this is the other. How do I know if they cut one another at 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 certain points? How do I know if they cut? Okay, this is x x squared. This is the line. How do I know whether they cut one another like so, or how do I know that this is not happening? You know, for example, this x squared and this blue line, they don't cut one another. How do I know that? By means of a procedure, of a, of a mathematical analytical method. What you do is the following. You will basically solve this equation. You're going to equate the function, the expression that represents the function, for example, in this case, x squared, and make it equal to the expression <coughs> that represents the line which is in this case x, you see, it's this equals to this, okay? And basically, you're going to try, you're going to try to solve this equation. So first I do this, then I'm going to factorize, okay? I continue over here. Then if two numbers, if this number x and if this number x minus 1, give me zero, the product, then that means that either x is zero or the other number, which is x minus one, is also zero. So that means that x equals zero or x equals one. So what did we find? We found that there are two solutions to this equation. This is the equation that I need to solve. And basically, if you have two solutions, at least two solutions, that means that your your two curves or your two graphs, which are which you're trying to, to represent here, this is one curve. Remember, I'm going to draw again very quickly here. This is your x squared and this is your straight line. If you find two solutions, at least two solutions, that means that at least there are two points that they share together, or that there are two points in at which they cut one another. You see? And if you notice, look, it's x equals 0 and x equals 1. Let's go back to our graph, and you're going to notice the following. Can you see here? x equals 0, that's one of the point, points of intersection. x equals 0, and x equals 1. You see? When x equals 0, and when x equals 1, you find points of intersection. That's how you solve it analytically. 